It's Tessa with Tape Over 50 coming to you from sunny England. So today I'm going to talk about another of my series about why would an American want to move to the UK? Because I did. Is it a good idea? Well, I've done a series. I've done safety. I've done affordability. I've done health. Who has a better quality of life? That kind of sums it all up, doesn't it? The US or the UK? I mean, what exactly do we think of when we consider our quality of life? I mean, there's so many different factors, right? I mean, the Oxford Dictionary describes it as a standard of health, happiness, and comfort that we experience. Uh, the WHO, not the rock band, gets a little more specific and defines it as your perception of your position in the world. Well, I kind of like that one. That does kind of ring a bell. Um, how do your expectations stack up? Are you happy with what you have and where you are? That definitely sells quality of life, doesn't it? Someone told me when I asked the question, it's being free to do as you please. In other words, not having to work nine to five if you don't want to or you don't have to. Um, you know, basically being the master or the mistress of your own domain, your own time schedule. And I think we would all agree that quality of life definitely includes doing as you like. <laughs> your time is your own. So I guess... Maybe at the root of it, it can be defined as just being satisfied with where you are in life. You know, happy with your surroundings and content. Would you agree? Uh, I think there are some key fundamentals, though, to consider that really kind of you have to have to have a good quality of life. And maybe these are some things that we take for granted, but they certainly are essential. So number one would be safety and peace. Now, I've touched on this before. Um, I've talked about safety, and I think we kind of gave the UK an edge on that one over the US. Um, I think, especially when it comes to gun safety, I do feel the UK edges out the US every time because guess what, folks? The US Constitution's Second Amendment, or the right to bear arms, affects everybody in the US, every American, whether or not they agree with it or whether or not they own a gun. Um, I think the fear that comes along with the haves and the have-nots is a big deficit when it comes to feeling safe in that country. So for that reason, I'm going to give the UK a little edge on that one. But an objective viewpoint, well, I found something called the Global Peace Index, yes. And I'll put the link below. This measures domestic and international conflict as well as safety and security within a country. So let's see what they have to say. Well, to be honest, neither the US or the UK get super high scores. Um, actually, the country of Ireland is number three most peaceful country in the world, so that is kudos to them. Uh, the United Kingdom, which is England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, comes in at number 37. The U.S., however, comes in way below that at number 131 out of all the countries in the world. I mean, this is after, the U.S. is after many countries that are considered third world. So it definitely does not get the thumbs up when it comes to peace. Um, that's a huge divergence between the UK and the US. So I'm going to definitely give the thumbs up to the UK on the safety and peace aspect of your quality of life here. So number two is health. I think we've all have to agree that without your health, you can't really have a good quality of life. And I've done another video on this. Uh, again, I think the UK got kind of top marks on that. But I found something called the Bloomberg Health Index. And it includes everything from health risks to access to clean water, life expectancy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And on this score, the UK ranked 19 and the US 36. So UK higher, US lower. Now I found another healthcare index on a site called Numbeo. And this is for mid-2023, and it gave the UK a score of 16 and the US a 36. So those are both kind of in line. Um, that's a good thing when you have two scores come in kind of at the same point. So again, the UK ahead of the US on health. And I'd have to give the edge to the UK because we know National Health Service, um, free health care for everybody that needs it, upholding a woman's rights to choose and for supporting a woman's right to have extended maternity leave. Those things really add to quality of life if you're starting a family, don't they?
So number three on the list of things I think you really have to have for quality of life is happiness. I mean, that is it, right? That's like in a nutshell. Um, you can't have good quality of life if you're not happy. So, and it's kind of surprising that the happiest countries are also some of the coldest and the smallest. Like for example, Finland is once again on number one slot. So, and of course now that they're getting into NATO, that must make them even happier. Um, but here actually, the U.S. may edge out the U.K. a little bit when it comes to happiness because the U.S. comes in at number 15 with the U.K. at number 19. So that's not a whole lot of big difference. Again, I'll put the links below so you can see where I get these numbers from. However, another set of stats put the U.K. slightly over the U.S. Um, so a little bit of a draw. We're both perhaps equally happy. But overall, I think we're going to give it to the UK, maybe a better quality of life due to safety and health. Um, but what about quality of life overall? Well, I certainly did a search on those numbers to see what I could come up with. <laughs> and, you know, again, what I found, it really kind of put the US and the UK almost at a draw. Um, it's really difficult. I mean, statistics are great um, for the big picture, but they don't tell the whole story. I mean, there's a lot of different indexes, a lot of different factors that can go into quality of life. I mean, for example, how well tolerated are you where you live? If, are you tolerated for your race, your religion, your sex? Do you feel accepted by your neighbors? Do you get along with your neighbors? Um, I think if you feel accepted where you live and your race or ethnicity isn't an issue, that definitely contributes to a better quality of life. How about religion? I mean, I think people that have religion as a very central pillar to their lifestyle would say that it definitely adds to their quality of life. And here there's a very strong divide between the U.S. and the U.K. I mean, religion is much more important to Americans. In fact, more than half of Americans believe that in order to be moral, you need to also believe in God. So uh, American Christians consider their religious identity just as important as their national identity, which is very different here in the UK and Europe as a whole, as a matter of fact. I mean, there's churches of all denominations here. You're free to practice whatever you want, but it's just not a central focus of people's lives, at least not most people's lives. Um, so while you can practice your religion in both countries, I think the being part of a bigger community that feels the way you do about your faith is important to your quality of life. Well, that may make a difference in where you want to live. Um, as for sex, well, I think women have a little better quality of life in the UK and in Europe, um, not only because of women's rights, but these are also some of the safest countries in the world to travel in. So that tells you a lot right there. So overall, I think if religion is important to you, being part of a tribe, perhaps fitting in, maybe achieving status through work or success, then you may find the U.S. gives you a better quality of life or the best quality that money can buy. However, if you see yourself a little more non-conforming, perhaps even a bit weird, <laughs> you know, there's a, a town in Texas called Austin, which you may have heard of, and they famously have said, keep Austin weird. Well, I think all of the U.K. is a little bit weird, but in a good way. Um, if you want to be tolerated, no matter your sex, religion, or race, and free to take as much vacation time as you need, then you may find your quality of life here in the UK. And you're certainly going to be safer and perhaps healthier as well. So there you go. I think we always need something to look forward to. That, to me, is quality of life. And I certainly think you can find it here in the UK. But there you go. I would love to see your comments, what your thoughts are about where you think or what you think is necessary for quality of life. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching.